Okay, this is like another p integral, that kind of thing. This is the integral from 0 to 1, 1 over x to the p power dx. Our goal is to figure out for what value of p will this integral converge. Notice that this is the second type of improper integral because we have a vertical asymptote when x is equal to 0. And then we, we have done something similar to this in class. But then the one that we did in class was it went from 1 to infinity, but this is from 0 to 1. So be careful with this. Let's look at the graph. This is the graph of 1 over x to the p power. And then our goal is to figure out between 0 to 1, for what value of p will we have finite area? All right? And as usual, this is the trouble sum when x is equal to 0 because we have the vertical asymptote. So we will change that into limit, and then we have the t. right? Instead of 0, we write down t. And then we take the limit as t approaches 0 plus. And the reason we just emphasize on 0 plus is because we only want the area from the right-hand side. So this right here is the definition of that. And then to handle this, what we do is just integrate it. But then to integrate 1 over x to a p power, we have to consider cases. p is equal to 1 versus p is not equal to 1. Because when we have p is equal to 1, we have 1 over x to the first power. And then the integral of that is ln x. And let's continue with this part first. So we integrate this, we get ln x. And what we do is plug in 1, plug in t, and we subtract. And then we are talking about what? We are taking a limit as t approach to 0 plus, when we have 1 in here, and then minus ln of t in here. Right? All right, ln of 1 is 0, no problem. And what's ln of t when we have t is approaching to 0 plus? If we look at the graph, this is the graph of ln. When you have the, um, the t value approach 0 from the right-hand side, you see the graph goes straight down. So ln of t goes to negative infinity when t goes to 0 plus. All in all, this is 0 minus negative infinity. It's just diverge. Okay? All right, second of all, let's consider if p is not equal to 1. Hopefully, we'll have something better to do right here. Right? We have the convergence situation here. If p is not equal to 1, we can look at 1 over x to the p power as x to the negative p, and then we get to use the reverse power rule. Namely, we add 1 to the exponent, and this is a new exponent, so we divide it by the new exponent. And let me write this as x. Let me write this flip that, which is 1 minus p. And on the bottom, I will write it as 1 minus p as well. Same thing. I will plug in 1 into x, and then subtract plugging t into x. So that's just the antiderivative part. And then I arrive at the stage, we have the limit as t goes to 0 plus 1 to the 1 minus p over 1 minus p, minus p to the 1 minus p power over 1 minus p. And now this part is a troublesome, because we have to see for what value of p will this converge. And then we have to remember, we are dealing with t is approaching to 0 plus. So we are only looking for 0 to a non-zero number. And the reason I say it's non-zero is because we say that p is not equal to 1, so there's no way for us to get 0 here. So it's either we have 0 to a positive value or 0 to a negative value. OK, if you have 0 to a non-zero non power, we have only two choices. The outcome will be 0 if we are talking about 0 to a positive number. The outcome will be 0. And the outcome will be infinity if we have 0 to a negative value for the power, because the, neg the negative power will bring this 0 down to the denominator, and all in all, it becomes infinity. So with that being said, this right here only has two choices. It's either it goes to 0 or it goes to infinity. It goes to 0 when the power is positive. You see, this is the power I put down. And then the reason I say it's greater than 0 is because I want this to be positive situation. So I have this inequality, 1 minus p is greater than 0. So you do this, you do that, you get p is less than 1. That's the condition. And then this guy will go to infinity, i.e. the whole thing will diverge if the power right here, we have a negative situation. Because once again, 0 to a negative power, we have 1 over 0 then, then we'll have infinity. And then the reason I have less than 0 is because I want to set the power to be negative. And then you do this, you do that, you get p is greater than 1. 
can therefore diverge. So here's the conclusion. The integral from 0 to 1, 1 over x to the p power dx, it converges if we have p is less than 1, which is this situation here. Because if this drops to 0, and that will be your answer. And then this integral will diverge if p is greater than or equal to 1. I have shown you if p greater than 1, then we have infinity right here. The whole thing will diverge. And then if p is exactly equal to 1, it's the L1 situation. It also diverges. So that's the conclusion. It's, it's like the, um, the standard one reversed, right? The one that I did in class is reversed. So know the limits of integrations and be careful on that. And let me just show you a quick example on how we can use this quickly. Suppose you are trying to integrate from 0 to 1, 1 over x to p power dx. In fact, you know what the answer to this already. This has to be equal to 1 over 1 minus p if p is less than 1. Because let's look back here again. If p is less than 1, this power goes to 0, and then this right here will be the answer. 1 to the any power, like this is like uh, well behaved, not infinity or things like that. It's like 1 to any power will be 1 over 1 minus p. So that will be pretty much the answer. So that only works if p is less than 1. Any other cases, then we have a divergent situation. So a quick example is if you have the integral from 0 to 1, 1 over the cube root of x. Well, we change the cube root to 1 third power, and notice that the 1 third it is less than 1, right? The power is, one, it is less than 1. So I can just plug in the 1 third into the p. So this integral will turn out to be 1 over 1 minus 1 third. And work out the denominator, we get 2 thirds on the denominator. 1 over 2 thirds, you flip that, so you get 3 half. And that's it. That's how you do it. Hope you guys enjoy this one.